This is Texans TV. Get to know your Houston Texans president, Jamie Roots, a little better. The best leaders are servant leaders. They see themselves as servants of the organization. And the Houston Texans love giving back to youth football. Texans 360 starts now. We are ready to rock in Houston. Rock and roll. Touchdown. Touchdown. Oh! There's always something else. Welcome into Texans 360. I'm your host, DP Sidhu. The Houston Texans are on a bye week. Texans 360 is not on a bye week. We bring you a brand new show like we always do. The Houston Texans are always out and about in the community doing good things. They caught up with some local high school teams. And we'll show you that in this week's episode of More Than a Game. Also, we catch up with the very best fans in the world. But first, every week I sit down with the Houston Texans player for my Deep Slant interview. This week, players are not in the building. They've got the week off, but we wanted to bring you some of our very favorite moments so far this season from the Deep Slant interviews. Uh, everyone knows your story about the 12th man. Maybe you're sick of talking about it. I'm never sick of hearing about it. It's such a great, great story. And I think a lot of people need to know that you are now an Emmy winner because the documentary Gilly won a Lone Star Emmy Award. Congratulations, first and foremost. I mean, sure, you can claim that I won an Emmy. Um, <laughs> I don't think I did too much. Um, I think it, the Emmy definitely goes to Texas Filmworks um, and Texags as well. And then um, one of the main producers in Clay Taylor, um, he worked with me every day, um, really was kind of like his his project baby. Um, I knew he was gonna do a good job with it. Um, you know, my story was in his hands. I was really excited to see the finished product and and it honestly turned out better than I could imagine. Um, and then and now, I guess I can add that to my resume. I am an Emmy Award winner. But again, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't me. I wasn't acting. I was just kind of up there talking on screen. Really kind of did a lot of the interviews leading up to the draft and then they were there at the draft, which is, you know, your typical seventh round pick or possible free agent doesn't normally have cameras and all types of stuff going on at the party. So it was uh, it was a little different, but in the end, I'm glad they were there to document it all. You know, it was it was a great day and, and I'm glad that they got to capture it all. And it's, it's great that other people are watching it, but, but just for me, you know, to show my future family one day, you know, this is what I did or Hopefully I'm not still living in the past, but maybe, um, you know, I can show them. Yeah, like they said in the documentary, there's more chapters to be written in the story, hopefully. So hopefully a lot. Hopefully many, a lot. Many, many hopefully it's a really thick, thick book. But anyway, I just <laughs> exactly. congrats on the Emmy. Um, you can see it. It's called Gilly. I believe it's on TexAgs.com. And uh, best of luck to you, Colin, for the rest of the 2020 season. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. It was a pleasure as well. Well, you went to West Georgia and you majored in accounting. Yep. Did you ever think, you know what, I might have to, if the football thing doesn't work out, I might have to go back and be an accountant or something. No, the Did you ever think what was going to happen if football didn't work out for you? I was in an interview at Northwestern Mutual for a salesman's job when I got the call from like an NFL scout about they wanted to come see me work out for a few teams. And literally, as I'm walking out of the interview, I get a call from a random number and they're like, hey, we want you to come perform for these couple teams and I'm literally like oh my god I might got a chance so how happy would you have been if like you never got the NFL call but you had taken the job what do you think you would have looked back and thought I wish it would have gone through would you have not looked back you seem like such a happy-go-lucky guy I feel like maybe it's, you would have been like it's crazy because I love football so much so literally in that interview I'm like kind of like watching like because I'm inside the office I'm watching all the people around kind of like what they're doing I'm seeing all these cubicles and I'm literally slowly and steadily like accepting like, oh my gosh, it's over with. The fun life is over with. Just going through my head like, I guess it's all over. And then I get that call. And that was the begin. That was the end of the sales career for now. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, maybe way, 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 way later in the future. Or right, well, we've definitely taken notice. Tyrell Adams, number 50 out on the field. Uh, making a name for himself this year in 2020. Tyrell, best of luck for the rest of the season. And you know what? I'm really glad that you did not take that job at Northwestern <laughs> Oh, definitely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Thanks, Tyrell. Well, you've been here the whole time Romeo Cornell's been here. He's served so many different roles. He's been defensive coordinator. He's been associate head coach. He's been assistant head coach with emphasis on defense. And 
And now he's serving as interim head coach. So how is he different from how he was when he was defensive coordinator? I know you know Rack so well. I don't think there's really much of a difference. The only difference is now he's overseeing the offense as well, too. So he's not really too heavily focused on defense, even though he's a defensive coach. You know, he comes in every day with the same juice and gets us all pumped up for practice. Rag, he's hilarious. He is definitely hilarious. Uh, sometimes he say things that you, I don't even think he knows that what he's saying. It's just ter just football terminology. That's it, literally. And then, you know, of course, in a room full of guys, you know, we, we, we're always going to take it the wrong way or whatever. So. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Whitney Merciless on the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. You can catch those complete interviews on HoustonTexans.com. I also have a podcast format so you can follow along on iTunes. Meanwhile, Drew has a thing he likes to do called Drew's Dozen. And this week he had a brand new guest. Uh, brand new for the Drew's Dozen, not brand new to us here at the Houston Texans. The president, Jamie Roots. He's also an author. He's got a brand new book out. And Drew thought, hey, you know what? Let's get to know President Jamie Roots a little bit better. So he did in this week's Drew's Dozen. We got team president Jamie Roots with us. And I say team president, but we got to call you noted author now these days, Jamie, because <laughs> you have penned a book. It's called The Winning Game Plan. Why did you write this? Well, Drew, we've had it, such an incredible run with the Houston Texans. And I think back to 2000 when we launched the team and so many people told me, look, Here's the deal. In Houston, Texas, if you win, people will come. If you lose, people won't come. And that's just the way it works. And I never believed that. I really felt in my heart that there was a plan that we could put together that would help us and allow us to be very successful as a business despite what happens on the field. Because the reality is the NFL is set up for every team to go 500. And if you bank on winning, you're not gonna do it every year. So there's gotta be something else going on. My background is more consumer products, although I've been involved with athletics my entire life. And so I understand the idea of what is the human need that we fulfill and focus on that. And uh, cause pe people can watch our games at home. There's a reason why they come out and support the Houston Texans. And that's what we needed to tap into. And that's what the winning game plan is all about. As far as leadership goes, you've plucked from a lot of different folks across a wide range of, of subjects and areas, and you've melded it with what you got. What have you taken? What are some of the best principles and best leaders that you've kind of taken from that, that kind of shows up in this book? Well, I tell you, if you were to put it all in a ball, because and, and you can't because there's so many uh, components that are that are talked about, the best leaders are servant leaders. They see themselves as servants of the organization, of the team. You know, they don't produce the results. They just create an environment where others can do their very best every day and feel very rewarded at the results that they achieve. And, and that's for me. I mean, I, as you ascend in any organization, you do less and less things and almost exclusively people in terms of the talent uh, and it, the ability to work well with others, whether you're working up down, out, or across. It's all about working with people. Okay, let's say the Texans win a game, noon game at NRG Stadium. What's the way you unwind after the game is over and you head on home? Well, you know, there's a lot of work that we have to do in terms of recapping what happened uh, at the game uh, off, off the field and uh, identify the ways that we can get better. I mean, we, we have this get better mentality that's just part of our culture. So it's probably about five o'clock or so that I get home and I just, I go on my back porch, hang out with my family. Used to watch uh, football with my son. Now I kind of have to do it on my own. He's at TCU now, but that, that's how I unwind is, is watching a game that I'm not that dialed into and just take a breath. Jamie, it's been great talking with you. The winning game plan is out just about everywhere. You can get it on amazon.com. That's probably one of the easiest places to get it, but anywhere else we should uh, keep our eyes open for it. What, November 10th, Amazon, go that day, and there'll be some special offers for you. jamieroots.com is a place for a number of uh, resources that can, you know, it dovetails the book, but they're, they're things that reinforce the messages that are talked about in detail. All right, thanks so much. The winning game plan coming out soon. Courtesy. Oh, and the net and the net and the net proceeds benefit the Houston Texans Foundation. So our Champions for Youth initiatives. Excellent stuff. Coming up next on Texans 360, episode three of More Than a Game. Stay tuned.
10. Linebacker Zach Cunningham became the 10th player in NFL history with at least 70 tackles and two sacks within the first seven games of a season. Three, Kaimi Fairbairn is now third in franchise history in career points scored. He moved past Andre Johnson, who had 388 career points, and now only trails Arian Foster and all-time Texan scoring leader Chris Brown. One, Deshaun Watson became the first quarterback in franchise history to complete at least 60% of his passes in each of the first seven games of a season. I'm Drew Doherty, and this is By the Numbers, presented by FedEx. Welcome back to Texans 360. The show rolls on. Well, we've got a lot of Houston Texans players that went to high school right here in Texas. So you never know the local high school kid down the street. He may be in the National Football League one day, and the Houston Texans certainly know it. They always want to give back to local high school football programs. And this week, we captured it in our latest episode of More Than a Game. <laughs> One of the things we talk about is that our job is not to just teach football, but to teach life lessons. We help them, but this is what life's gonna be. And these challenges that here on the football field is what you're gonna face in life. And it's adversity, it's not how hard you fall down, it's how you pick yourself up. My name and position is uh, Sean McDowell. I'm the head football coach, campus athletic coordinator at Foster High School in the Richmond Rosenberg area. My role with USA Football and my role with the Texans are kind of hand in hand. I first started with USA Football uh, about six, seven years ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer when I was a master trainer. So my role uh, was to get trained by USA Football uh, in blocking and tackling. And then we would go around and teach youth leagues, uh, middle school on down on the proper techniques of tackling. And I was able to connect with the Houston Texans because uh, they do a great job with their youth programs and uh, we created um, their Play Safe programs in conjunction with USA Football and I was able to work with them in that way. I was blessed to be uh, C.D. Lamb's high school football coach. Uh, really helped to mature him and, and get him where he needed to be as a high schooler and really help him get to Oklahoma. And then watch him take off in his career at Oklahoma was, was magical. The talent in the greater Houston area, not just including Rich and Rosenberg, but all over the greater Houston area is probably second to none. The Fort Bend Youth Football League has been around for a long time. And there's quite a few different leagues around here with Katy uh, Football League and there's Gridiron Football League, and, but the Fort Bend Youth Football has been around so long. And it's just a, like kind of a pipeline. It's kind of like where it all starts. With the 40th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Ross Blacklock, defensive tackle, TCU. Yeah, I've watched Ross Blacklock uh, probably since the age of nine years old. Uh, Ross is a very good athlete. Ross played football, baseball. Ross also ran track. Uh, watched him through high school, Elkins High School. Uh, and as a matter of fact, literally, Ross was a running back. And now he's a defensive lineman, but he's always showed that, that athleticism. I'm Jacqueline Jean-Baptiste. I'm the executive director for Fort Bend Youth Football League. So the mission for Fort Bend Youth Football League is to teach the fundamentals of football and cheer along with the camaraderie, teaching kids accountability and teamwork amongst each other. 
So the partnership that we have with the Texans is awesome. Um, our kids get to either volunteer, like on Sundays, passing out things. Our kids get to um, go to the games. The year of the Super Bowl, when it was in Houston, we were the showcase team and we had former Texans come out to our Super Bowl, but it means a lot to our organization to be acknowledged by the Houston Texans. My name is Denny Ranish Jr. I'm the athletic director slash commissioner of the Bay Area Football League. We've been around since uh, 1977. First year we started, we had about six to eight teams in our league, and now we've expanded. We're up to 16 teams in our league. Our mission, what the Bay Area Football League's always been about, is teaching these boys and, and some young ladies how to prepare themselves for junior high and high school ball. Our job here is to teach fundamentals of football and get them ready in, in an environment where you know they're being coached, but yet it is competitive. This football program is, is everything. Being accepted by the Houston Texans for the Showcase League uh, is a tremendous honor. We're very excited about it. Uh, and then, you know, obviously being in the year that we are, it's, it's not a normal year in our world with COVID and everything. So they've, uh, the Houston Texans, as long uh, as well as USA football, uh, have kind of been, you know, the big brothers to us and helping us guide, you know, through this season, recommending things, you know, uh, uh, helping us with COVID procedures and things like that. So this year, more than ever, it has been a tremendous help and a complete honor. We catch up with the best fans in the world, next on Texans 360. It is so good to see some fans in the building today. I absolutely felt safe. The staff here with the social distancing guidelines, enforcing mask rules, at no point did I feel unsafe or uncomfortable. Just the policies and procedures that you guys have set up with uh, lots of hand sanitation stations, as well as making sure that everybody's walking around having a mask. If anybody doesn't have a mask, I've seen about three people come up and talk to them to ask them to safely put on their mask. Oh, you guys have definitely, uh, even with the COVID-19 and all the safety precautions, you've created a great environment. Even with all the safety nuances, it's not that much unlike what your normal game day experience would be. Love hearing from our Houston Texans fans. And let me tell you, it is so much better to have fans here at home games, even if it is in a limited capacity. It's very safe. You can't walk three feet without seeing a hand sanitizer. Everyone's masked up. And you know what? If you want to go to a Houston Texans game this season, you still can go to Ticketmaster.com slash Texans for your tickets. Now, season ticket members, they've had a lot of fun this year with our very own Mark Vandermeer. He's really taken his role as game show host very seriously. And you know what? He is excelling at it. Hello, Texans, and welcome to the show that has taken over Texans fandom. It's called First in 10. You've come to the right place. Here's how we play. You both get the ball at your 25-yard line. If you answer a first down question correctly, you go 10 yards. If you answer a big play question correctly, you go 20 yards. So we advance the ball down the field this way. Whoever gets to the end zone first wins. Adam, you're up big play or first down. What do you think? Uh, we're going for a big play again, Mark. What state is Deshaun Watson from? No, he's from Georgia. That It is Georgia. You're right. All right, Marta, come on. Let's charge. Now, you can hail Mary it, okay, and go for a touchdown right here. He would have a chance to respond with a big play, or you can just say big play and hope that he misses the next one. Up to you, Marta. Let's do a Montana. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Okay. Gary Kubiak, who coached the Texans, has been a part of how many Super Bowls? Seven, nine, five, or six? Seven. Marta's in the end zone. Oh my gosh, Marta, <laughs> you did go it. Texans. Marta, you're the winner. How about that? Wow, go Texans. Next, we catch up with some of your Texans legends to do good in the community. That's coming up on Texans 360.
One final segment of Texans 360. We've got a lot of players that are active in the community, but even once they're done with their football careers here in Houston, Texas, as an NFL player, we have former legends, former gridiron legends, former ambassadors still giving back and doing great things for the Houston community. And this week, some of our former players partnered up with Chevron for a community event that was really special. Take a look. I'm excited to be out here today. We are doing our market pantry here at our Houston Texans Teen Club and our John and Sissy Havert Club here in Houston. Today we are running our drive-through market pantry. So our families are coming through with their trunks popped open or their back doors open so we can put the boxes directly into their cars, make it a very smooth and seamless process for them to be able to have the food and resources they need. We are here with some other legends with the Chevron Market Pantry, handing out some school supplies and some food on behalf of the Texans and Chevron. So today, very excited that our families get a special treat from activity kits for our kiddos. But we also are giving out a week worth of shelf-stable meals, including some produce and some juice and, and other substance that will keep them throughout this time. I'm very thankful to our volunteers, our staff, and our community members, and then a special thank you again to the Houston Texans and also Chevron for helping us have the resources to be able to create a drive through pantry in this time of need. Always great to see Texans players, former Texans players, and everyone else doing good things in the community. Always good to see you, and we'll see you next week when the Texans travel to Jacksonville. It was fun catching up with you on the bye. Special thanks to everyone that worked on this show, Tyler Sutter, Tyler Marcotte. For all of you watching out there, stay safe, mask up, and as always, go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.